Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the second video of the SwiftUI to-do app series, where we're building a to-do app from scratch in SwiftUI, and then we'll refactor it to use the combined framework. In this video, we'll be building out our data persistence layer. I recommend that you watch the previous video in this series, but if you're just starting here, you can download the completed project from the last video from the link in the notes below. If you enjoy this series, please give the videos a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you ring the bell to get notified when new videos are released. And I encourage you to leave a comment below, and if you're inclined, you can support my work by buying me a coffee. I'll leave a link in the notes below too. All links to the videos are in the description below. So what good is a to-do app if there's no data persistence? Restarting the app should pick up where you left off. Your first thought might be to add something like core data or realm so that you can persist your data to a backend database. Well, in my opinion, for apps like this, it's a lot of overkill. We won't have any need for any database optimization as we will load all to-dos stored in the file on launch into memory. And each time we make a change, we'll update the file. So the first thing we need to do is to create an extension for file manager. This will help us simplify our code. So, create a new group called Extensions. Within that group, create a new file and call it File Manager plus Extension. At the top of the file, create a constant called File Name and provide it with a string value of todos.json. Now, since this is created outside of a class or function, it's going to be accessible from anywhere in our application. And this is going to be safer than having to type a string each time where I can probably make some errors. Now, normally I'd create a constant struct with static properties for this purpose, but as this is the only one I'm going to use, I'm taking a bit of a shortcut. Next, create an extension to File Manager. Now, I want to make this extension to be generic enough so that we can use it in other projects. So no hard-coded properties anywhere. Within the extension, create a static computed property called docdir URL, which will be of type URL. And we want to return the location of the documents directory. Now, since we're in the file manager extension itself, we can access the type by using a capital S for self and then return the default URLs for the documents directory in the user domain mask. Now, theoretically, there could be many directories here, but I want to return the first so we can safely unwrap it. Next, we're going to create two functions that will allow us to pass in a document name and either retrieve the contents from the file or save the contents to the file. In each case, the contents will be a string that will have been formatted as JSON. So first, the save document function. It's going to have three parameters, contents, which will be a string, followed by the document name that we want to use. And since we are going to want to know that if trying to save will generate an error, we're going to have that completion handler that will have an optional error as its parameter. The URL that we want to save will be that static property that we just created, appending the path component, which is the doc name. Then we can use a do try catch block and write the contents to the URL using UTF-8 encoding. Now, if there is an error, we can catch that. And in that catch block, we'll call the completion handler with our error. For the read document function, we'll need to only pass in the name of the document and a completion handler that will issue the result which will contain the data and an error if there is any. Now, if you want to learn more about the result type, I recommend that you watch my video on that topic. I'll leave a link in the notes below. We'll use the same URL as the previous function, and then we'll run another do try catch block. 
Within the do block, we can try to extract the contents of the URL as data. And then, if successful, we can execute our completion handler with the results success case, passing along the data that was found. If it fails, we can complete with the failure case, passing back the error. Now there's one more function that might come in handy. We only want to be able to read our document if it actually exists. So let's create a function that will have the doc name as a parameter, but return a Boolean value based on whether or not that document exists. And file manager has a function that will help us with this. We just need to pass in the path of that URL that we have used in the other two functions. With these in place now, we can go back to our data store view model and utilize the functions to save and load our to-dos. The first thing I want to do is to be able to locate that file when I'm running in the simulator so that I can actually check out the contents if I'm having issues. So in the initializer, when we initialize our data store, let's print the path. And that's the file manager .dir URL path. And once it's initialized, we can check to see if the document actually exists before we load our to-dos. So we can enclose our load to-dos function in an if block that only checks if our call to our file manager check returns true. And remember, file name is that constant containing the name of the file that we want to use. Now the current version of our load to do's function just loads in that static array of to do's. We want to load in from the disk. Now on first launch, to do's is initialized as an empty array, and we'll only attempt to load it if the file exists. So let's assume that the file exists then and call our newly created file manager function. We can use an instance of the file manager and execute the read documents function passing in the doc name. And if we hit enter on the completion handler, we see that it will expect a result where we are getting data for a successful retrieval and an error if failed. Let's call that simply result and switch on the two cases. In the case of success, we will get our data. So let's assign it to the variable data and then we can create a decoder and follow that by trying to decode that data into an array of to-dos. This will require a do try catch block again. Within the do block, we can try to decode and assign it to our published array of to-dos. And that will cause our list to refresh. If the decoding fails, we can catch that and print the error using the decoding errors localized description. In the case that the file manager created an error, we can assign that error provided by our function to error and again print out the errors localized description. In the outline for this course, I mentioned that we'd be looking at dealing with errors in a responsible way and printing them out is of no help to our end user. So I'll be coming back to that in the next video. Now, the final thing we need to do is to complete our save to do's function. We're going to need to encode our data and then use our file manager save document function to write it to our file. I'm gonna leave this print statement in here for now as it might help us out later on when checking our code. So first we'll create an encoder and then a do try catch block. In the do block, we try to encode our to do's and assign that data to a variable. If we're successful, we can convert that data to a string using the string decoder for data as utf8.self and pass that string on to our file manager save document function along with the name that we want to save it as. Again, it's that constant. 
The completion handler will return an error only if the saving was unsuccessful. We can check that to see if there is a non-optional error and then print out the localized description. If the encoding error failed, we can print out that error's localized description in our catch block. So when do we want to save our data? Well, every time we add, update, or delete our to-dos. So within each of these functions, let's add a call to that function. Time to test then. Let's run the app in the simulator, and as expected, the list is empty. Let's add a new to-do. Let's add a second one. Now exit the app and run again. You'll see we have persistence. Let me delete one of the to-dos and then update another one. If we exit and run again, it all seems to be working. Well, so far so good, but we really do need to do a better job on error reporting in case something does go wrong. And that's what we'll look at in the next tutorial.